Now that we understand the three phases of event propagation, it's good to know that we can stop them from happening, and how to do that. There are two methods we need to pay attention to. The first is event.stop propagation, and the second is event.stop immediate propagation. They differ slightly in how they work. Stop propagation will keep any following handlers from firing, but allow sibling handlers to fire. Stop immediate propagation shuts down siblings, too. If that's confusing, don't worry, we're going to step through it. Here's a code skeleton, as you can see on screen. Now let's add some event listeners, but we'll stop event propagation in the middle. Here's the code. Go ahead and save that and refresh. When we run that, we'll see that the second click handler does log, but the body handler does not. This is because the second handler is considered a sibling. So let's prove that. Button 1, event 1, button 1, event 2, but no body event 1. That sibling is on the same level of the chain, happening during the target phase in this case. So it fires. Meanwhile, the bubbling phase is cancelled entirely. If we want to stop even siblings from firing, we need to use stop immediate propagation. Like this. Save this, refresh, click our second button. The only thing that logs there is our first event catcher, because everything, even siblings, has been cancelled. However, this only works in one direction. You can't cancel stuff from a previous phase, only in the same phase or phases that follow it. So if at the bottom we add this code and set our handler to fire during the capturing phase, it's going to run. Observe. Save that, refresh, click the second button again, and this time we get that body event before the button event. Because we set that optional boolean to true, we're hitting this event in the capturing phase, but our call to stop immediate propagation doesn't happen until the target phase. So by the time we get there, our handler in the capturing phase has already run. We could of course add a stop immediate propagation or even a regular stop propagation to that final piece of code and it would stop everything because both the target and bubbling phases come after capturing. I said last week that I'd talk a bit about why you might not want to stop event propagation. I feel like these examples have already helped explain it a bit, but to be specific, because event propagation is a three-phase process, and because event listeners can be defined just about anywhere in your code, it can be very difficult to be 100% certain that, when you stop propagation in one place, you're not canceling out an event listener defined somewhere else. Similarly, it can be difficult to be certain that events set to use the capturing phase won't continue to run, even when you don't want them to. In general, I don't stop propagation unless there's troubling behavior happening due to a handler for a different element. Generally speaking, you can avoid that issue entirely by using IDs and document.getElementById, instead of relying on methods that generate node lists, like document.getElementsByClassName. By setting handlers to specific IDs, you reduce the odds that they're going to be called unexpectedly, or that other handlers are going to cancel them. At any rate, there are many valid reasons why you might want to stop propagation either immediately or at least in the next phase of the process. Now you know how. Go forth and use this information wisely. I'll be back next week with something new. See you then.